Hey everybody, Danny Rod here. Thanks for joining us. This week, as you can see, we are still in lockdown. And to be honest, I'm quite enjoying it because look, I'm giving, it's given me the opportunity to teach my wife, Laura, how to play golf. And what's been fascinating is she's probably got exactly the same questions that you have right now. Things like, how do I stop hitting the ground behind the ball with my irons? How do I make sure I get ball first contact? Why does my ball go off to the right? and then goes dead straight for the next shot. What is the difference? How, I don't understand, you know, why can I hit it good one minute, but then absolutely terrible the next? So the difference between probably you and my wife is that my wife does not let me off the hook. So she needs a way to practice so that when she's hitting her good shots, she knows why, and when she hits the bad shot, she also knows why she's hitting them. Because if you don't, if you, do, if you can't tell the difference between the two, how can you actually improve? So in this week's training, I'm gonna share, you, share with you exactly how you can consistently strike your irons, but more importantly, one, how you can practice it properly and effectively so that you can tell why you hit a bad one and why you hit a good one, because this is so, so important to, uh, for improvement. And if we've got time, I might even introduce you to a, a cool drill with the drive where you can do exactly the same. So before I get into the training though, look, if you're new to the channel, this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Press that little bell button next to the subscribe button, you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. So let's start with the irons first. So one of the key, very simple, right? If you want to strike irons well, here's the science. You have to strike the ball, than the ground. So what do I mean by that? Well, the club is, in our golf swings, the club acts like this, okay? It's an arc, okay? Where at some stage, look, the club will reach the bottom part of the arc before it goes back up again, right? Now with the irons, what we want to have happen is this. We catch the ball before it reaches the low point of the arc. This is the irons, okay? With the driver, we catch the ball on the after the low point of the arc. Can you see the difference? So with drive, we catch it, there's a low point of the club, and it, we catch the driver on the way up, and with the irons, we catch it on the way down. So what does this mean, and how, you, how can you practice this effectively so you can do this? So I've got um, a very simple setup here. What I've got, a, I've got here is I've just laid a, a towel on the ground. Okay, you may have seen this drill before, but I've got an ad adaptation of this. So what you do is you place a golf ball, maybe two, maybe, yeah, I would say about two, two and a half to three balls in front of the mat. Now, what you do here is this. You could start off, and this can be just, this can work almost immediately. You could start off by just simply making some swings. Now, clearly, if you release this club and this club starts to bottom out too early, it's gonna start to strike that mat and you're gonna get some instant feedback, all right? There's the first thing. So by avoiding this mat, you're naturally gonna to start to transfer your weight onto the front foot because your body's smart and your body's effective. And this is the thing what I was doing with Laura is I said to her, look, if I give you exercises like this, your body's smart and it, what it does, it self-organizes itself. It kind of works out in its own way how to miss that mat. And as a byproduct, naturally starts to produce good swing mechanics. So that's what we want to be able to do. So we get yourself set and we're going to make some swings and we're going to set up here where the ball would be. And we're going to make some swings and just simply try and strike the mat after the golf ball. Now, I can do this because I've been doing it for a long time, but do you know what, Laura, and maybe you, you might find that you end up doing this. Great, now you've got some feedback. You don't have to work out why you're doing it at this stage, right? All you've got to do is, is this is the point, you don't have to get, that's too complicated. Laura said to me and she goes, why, why did I do that? I said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for now. Just simply trust your body to kind of work the answer out so you get yourself set and just practice. The task is simply to miss the towel. That's the aim you get the, the, uh, the technique for free, all right? So the task is to miss the towel. The problem is, it, this towel alone can just can sometimes cause problems. So people do and go like this, they just pick the club up in the air and, hey, hey look, oh, I've missed the towel. But as you know, watching this, that's not the swing we want. So the little adaptation here is you grab a T-peg. And what you do is you now set up a little station where the ball, you've got this gap here, but then what you do is you put a T-peg pointing directly at the target. Because what did we say earlier? The low point happens after the golf ball. So we don't just want to miss this mat. We want the club to continue through the ball and the get hit the low point after the golf ball. So watch this. If you finish here, 
you're going to miss clearly going to miss the tee but if you not only do you actually miss the mat sort of the uh, the towel here but then actually start to look at squaring the club face up to that tee so we want to try and hit this tee dead straight you're now going to get the ball and then the, the second goal is then to get the T. This is going to encourage this motion. Now, if you missed the last week's video where I said, how do you, a good image would be striking the match through, you got this match here and you're striking the match. This is kind of the same old thing, but more importantly, this will give you some feedback. So watch this. I'm going to line that up again. Okay, I've put, I've, I've put this um, yeah, T peg probably about two to three balls in front of the ball. And what, watch this. If I do this and I flick back and I I've missed the T-Pick, why? Because what I've done is I've got very wristy and this is what Laura was doing initially. So she wasn't getting any real strike with this. So what we then did, so right, okay, she didn't know what she was doing. Why am I, why is it flicking on top and on the ground? Well, now you've got feedback. So the task I gave Laura was this, hit the ball and the T-Pick and that's your goal. So you're gonna work on, look at this, I'm gonna strike the ball and then I'm gonna collect the T-Pick but I've also lined the T-Pig up straight, so you try and hit the T-Pig dead straight into the mat, into the, uh, into the net. Why is this good? Well, watch this. If you're trying to hit the T-Pig straight into the mat, it's also giving you a wonderful image of getting the club face square. You're not gonna be doing this and this, all right? Let's have a look at this in action. So we get ourselves set, back, and through. So I've nailed that ball and I've nailed the tipe dead straight. So you start to set that station up. What I love about this is this, you're not gonna get it straight away, but now the difference is, is you're gonna know why you haven't struck the golf ball because you've got some feedback. You've got some feedback from the towel. You're gonna know why the ball goes off in different directions because you haven't collected the club face up, all right? But there's one, another adaptation you can have with this. So you grab another ball, and what we're gonna do now is this, exactly the same setup, put the ball in front of the mat, but this time we're gonna use two tees and we're gonna line two tees up again, just in front. Now I like this, okay, because again, what it does is it gives a nice square kind of thing, uh, almost alignment. And what you try to do here is, is you wanna take these two tees out. Look at this, it's gonna give you the visual impact of missing the mat, of missing the towel. Then you're gonna come in square, and then when you come through, look, you're gonna imagine hitting that, uh, the tee pegs afterwards with a square face. If you're the kind of person to open your face for impact, creating slices, or closing them, creating hooks, clearly you might hit the, the front tee out or the back tee, but you're not gonna hit necessarily both out at the same time. So, great thing here is, watch this, we get ourselves set. We're now gonna take both tees out and try and hit both tees dead straight. This is gonna help you hit those tees straight down the middle okay that's the goal get yourself set and away we go now we might have a little bit of time now to try exactly the same thing with driver Watch this space. Let's have a look. Right, so let's look at driver. So we're going to do exactly the two. We want to achieve exactly the two things with driver. We want to get hit the ball on the correct arc, and we also want to have an exercise that gives us feedback on whether the club face is square or not. So have a look at this. If I put two tee pegs just in front of the golf ball, probably again about three or four uh, balls in front of that golf ball, I've lined them up so they're parallel to you here, straight on line with you, and they're square to my target. They're gonna be act as two things. I've gotta hit this golf ball and swing above the tees, which would show me, give me proof that I'm swinging on an upward arc on the way through. If I was catching the ball with a drive, which a lot of people do, and they don't hit it very far, on the way down, I would catch the ball, and then I would take out those tees, and I'd just obliterate them. So putting the tee pegs in front gives us a, a evidence as to are we actually hitting up on the ball? There's the first thing. The other thing, by lining two tees up, it gives me the sense of where straight is, where square is here. So let's have a look at this in action. I get myself set, nice and easy. Okay, backwards and forwards. And away we go. And I've 
just clipped the top of that one and flown straight over the two here. Now, I would probably show you how not to do it too, but if I did that, I might hit this ball straight over here into a neighbor's garden, and I don't really wanna do that. So here's an exercise that you can get immediate feedback as to what you're doing. Very, very simple, helps you to feel where square is. If you wanted, you could start very slowly and just hit a few shots like this, where you just, Practice, look at the club face nice and square here. Just practice clipping, in the, clipping the tee and going through and then gradually build it up until you've got the, you're clipping the, the tee out of the ground and then you've got that square face. Don't make it too wooden, we still wanna be flowing through, but really, really important. So let's summarize a little bit. What do we do? Well, it's all about arcs and when you hit the golf ball. You hit the ball earlier in the arc, early, before the low point of the club with your irons, and you hit it after the low point with your driver. How can you kind of learn to, uh, to do that and get feedback to, to test whether you're doing it correctly or not? Well, the low point, put a towel behind the golf ball, but that won't only work. Remember, put a tee peg in front of the golf ball as well, about two to three balls width, and try to then smash that tee peg dead straight where you're going whilst missing the towel. And that will help you to square up the club face. Do exactly the same with the driver, tee ball behind, uh, miss the uh, tee, uh, tees on the way through and it'll show you that you're hitting it on the upward arc and just square those tees off. This can help you do those two things and it gives you, it's what I call deliberate pra practice, it gives you feedback as to what you're doing and it will help you improve without somebody having to watch you and tell you what you're doing all the time. So I really, really hope this helps. Of course, look, there's a practice plan as usual in the description below, so don't forget to pick one of those up. Uh, but until next week, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel for free, of course, if, you're, if you haven't already. But until next week, have a great golfing week.